Hey, what is it guys? Let's talk about ray casting today. A useful function we get to use coming straight from the physic part of the Unity engine. Today we're going to be looking at the raycast function along with other similar one and uh, by that I'm talking about box cast, capsule cast, sphere cast, line cast and also all the other overlap function. They're all from the physic namespace. Alright, so to put it bluntly, raycast is the act of throwing a ray from a very specific point in the world, so just assume it's going to be a vector 3, and shooting it in a direction until it reaches a certain distance. If that ray does reach a distance without hitting any surface on the way, so we're talking about colliders here, any walls, any other player, if it reaches the full distance, then we can say that the raycast is false, meaning that there is nothing in the way of that ray. Before explaining any further, we're going to be looking at some existing mechanic that might use a raycast implementation, whether that is in Unity or any other engine, um, every other engine pretty much has something similar to this to some extent. And we're going to jump right into some of my favorite games, so we're going to start with Overwatch. In most shooter games, there is not really a bullet traveling from your gun towards the crosshairs direction, this is just an illusion. This is the case for the sniper in Overwatch. Technically, all that happens when you fire a bullet out of the sniper rifle is that it plays an animation on the gun, shoots a raycast from the gun towards the crosshair, and then um, if that raycast hits something on the way, it deals damage to that something or it creates a decal on the object. Now obviously, everything happens in a single frame. Next one is World of Warcraft. In this example, I will attempt shooting a spell at an enemy that is technically in range, but there is a wall separating us. I get the error, target is not in line of sight. The game sent a raycast from my avatar towards the enemy and it hit a wall so my avatar does not really see the target, therefore it denied my casting sequence. When I get back inside of the enemy and I try again, it works as intended. A final quick example that we've used before here on the channel, casting a ray below our character to know if he's grounded or not. We shoot a very very small ray downward, and uh, if it collides with the ground, then we consider ourselves as grounded. Now something that makes this practice really cool, is that you actually get information out of that ray cast. It's not only yes, it has hit something, or no, there's nothing blocking the ray. In Unity, you can have information extracted from the collider that blocked the ray, and then from that collider you can pretty much navigate the object itself. Let me give you an example, so going back to our raycast to check if we're grounded or not. Something I sometimes do is I retrieve information from the ground and I ask the collider what is the normal of the face I've just hit. The normal vector can then tell me how steep the slope is and I can decide whether my avatar should be in a walking state or in a sliding state. Anyway, now that you understand how casting away works, Try replacing that thin ray by an actual sphere. Instead of shooting a single dot in a direction, you're shooting a sphere that has a radius. This is sphere cast. This could be useful, say, for a catapult boulder, because it's bigger in size, it has a bigger radius than an actual bullet. The bullet may fit through some gaps that the sphere can't, and this is where you would use a sphere cast instead. Box cast is pretty much the same concept, just replace the sphere by a box. When calling this function through the code, you get to define what is the radius of that sphere and what are the bounds of the box. And finally, let's talk about the overlap function. For this one, imagine that you're shooting a grenade. It lands somewhere on a point and it just explodes. Using an overlap sphere at the detonation point is going to return you all the collider inside of that sphere so you can sort through them and then push the rigid body off or remove hit point of those objects. So overlap functions are simple. You define a certain point in the world, a 3D vector, you then define a radius if you're using a overlap sphere, and you define bounds if you're using a overlap box. It then creates that sphere or box in the game, and it will return every collider inside of that for you to iterate over. Pretty cool. Alright, so we're back with the engine part, the action part of the uh, tutorial, so we're going to be looking at a few ways to actually do it. 
uh, an example so you can actually like reproduce that if you wish. Now, um, as always, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to improvise a little bit and we're going to be using Raycast this time. So um, let me show you what we have right now. We have a nice little scene going on here. I have a player I can move with my um, joystick input. So everything seems to be working very smoothly. And every object you see, they have colliders. Uh, this is pretty much a reason why I can jump on them and do all that kind of stuff. Now, the only thing that don't have colliders are these blocks down here. I don't really, didn't really feel like putting one on those. But um, what we're going to be doing, what I feel like doing actually, is taking all of these little bonfire things. So bonfires. And um, as you can tell, they have a box collider around them. They have like a nice box collider. What I'd like to do is actually tell my player, well, from the player's point, send the raycast in front of you and um, if that raycast hits a collider say in this case if it hits this collider then go ahead and just grab it you see that in Skyrim you see that in a lot of games so let's just go ahead and grab this object and carry it around with us so to do that what we're gonna do is take our player position so the position of my uh, character right here and we're gonna send a raycast in front of her now, if that raycast hits something, we're going to get some information back. That's the first step we're going to do. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a new script that's going to be like all about raycasting, and I'll be putting it on my player. So let's do a script. This is going to be the raycast test, or you could be calling it a pickup item, you know, something like that. But I'll be using this thing here, and I'll just close everything else. Now, um, this is going to be put on top of my player, so my player is going to be this transform. My player is going to be the one having this script. Let me just find it really quickly. It should be under here. My scene's getting a little bit messy. Sorry about that. So player, okay. My player has all of these. Now um, the mesh that I rotate, I think it's this one. I'm just going to make sure by playing the game. Yeah, this is the one that has the rotation. So this is the one that knows where exactly my transform is facing. So I'll be using this, putting it on my um, my player. So I'm going to declare a private void update because I'll want to actually refresh this every single frame. Um, just for now, just for now, I only want to refresh this every single frame. Then we're going to put it on an input. So say when I click on my mouse button, then it's going to do the raycast. But since I want to visualize it right now and I just want to be able to see it, we're going to be putting it in an update. So um, we're going to start by creating a ray. Now, ray, you just type in like that, that's a new ray right there. Um, that's the type, and you can say ray, ray, or any name you want, is equal to a new ray, and then this takes in uh, a origin and also a direction. So the origin in that case, let's use the player transform, so transform.position. This is going to be the center of my player, so center of my avatar. Now the direction we're going to take is my player's facing so my player is facing a certain direction that's the one we're going to be taking and we can get it doing a transform dot forward this is going to give you a uh, unitary vector so a vector of one um, pointing in the right direction now if we don't really want to do the test just yet the expensive uh, equation is the test so let's say we only want to be able to see it right now we could do a debug dot draw ray and this takes in parameter um, it doesn't take in a ray unfortunately so you have to say Ray dot start, or wait, Ray dot origin, sorry, and then Ray dot direction. So you send in those two parameters, and then you can send him some more information, such as the uh, color and how long the ray is going to last. For this example, let's just give it a um, a color. So we're gonna be using a cyan color because why not? Good times. Let's go right into the game, and we can actually visualize that right away. Now, I don't know if you guys see it, my pivot point is actually at the very bottom of my player, so we're going to have to change it a little bit. And um, if you do not see your ray, that is because the gizmo over here is not enabled. Make sure you do enable that, this is required for you to be able to see it. Now, you can always see it in, um, in the, the scene view, so if you're not seeing it in the game scene, you can still see it in the scene view. Now, this is of course really important if you're trying to test out stuff and uh, you want to look at it. Alright, so I'll go back in my code and I'll just give it a small offset. So over here I say we're going to take a transform the position, but my transform the position is actually the, the very base of the foot. So I'll do a plus vector 3 dot up, which is going to give it an additional um, 1 in Y. 
And since my character is 2 meter tall, then it's going to be right in the center. Okay, so we get something of the sort like this. And um, let's actually have a look in the scene view. If we just position ourselves properly. Technically, if we do a ray cast right now, this should collide. This should actually work because the ray is inside of that collider. Now, I know it's a little bit hard to see with the lighting and such. I'll turn it off. But if you can tell right here, it's inside. Okay. So, let's actually do that ray cast. Let's actually test it out. So, we're going to go right inside of here and let's put a, uh, a mouse button click on it. So, if input dot mouse button let's use get mouse button down and the int button is going to be zero for left click so if we're pressing on left click let's do a physics dot raycast now this one has 16 different overloads so there is a lot of thing you could send in um, since we already made our class ray we can actually just define it right here we can just say ray and then go from there but um, of course, what you could do is actually define your origin, then your direction in the same part. So let's actually just try casting that ray. And we're going to put it inside of a debug.log because like I said earlier, just casting a ray like that is going to return you a true or false. So if we just do it like that, this is going to return a boolean. Now just like in the theory video, if we do not hit anything, then it's going to return false but what we get down here is actually true and now let me show you why exactly we're getting through it is because on top of my player I have this thing called the character controller and the character controller is actually a, um, a collider itself as well so when we, we are in the game and we press on the left mouse button then we get through no matter what and uh, you know it's even if we do move and go somewhere else we're moving with the capsule now what I'm going to do just to test this out is I'm on the player right now and I'll put the layer on ignore raycast now this is a little bit uh, self-explanatory but this is going to ignore the raycast and we still hit something else which is a little bit odd now even with ignore raycast we're still getting true which is quite weird and to be honest I do not know what is exactly interfering with that raycast so here is something we can do what we can do is we can get information out of what is actually colliding with that raycast and just go from there we, we can debug using the raycast itself and that's what we're gonna do right away so right inside of my get mouse button down I'll declare a new type raycast hit something you might have used in the past and we're gonna call it now what is this exactly? This is a structure that we can actually see a little bit. It has all of that information we can get. So when we do send our raycast on, um, say, a wall, then we can get all of that information out of that wall. The transform, the rigid body, the normal, the point, the distance, and all that kind of good stuff. So let's go ahead and just apply it right here. So here is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be using the third overload of the physics.raycast. And the way we write it, it's exactly like it says right here. So we get to type in out and that, and then the uh, raycast hit field. In, in our case, it would be it. So out it just like that. And we still get the true or false value out of the physics.raycast. But at the same time, we get information in the hit field. And now using our hit field, we're going to be looking at um, what exactly are we hitting. So let's do hit the transform dot name just to get the name out of what we're actually hitting. Let's try this out in the game. So here we are. And then if we press on left mouse button, we do hit something and we hit wall 11. Now let's look for wall 11. And here it is. So I don't know if you guys can tell, but our player is right here on the left side and we're hitting wall 11 which is the one that is highlighted right now. And you kind of understand why in this case. Um, right now, what we're doing is we're, we're doing a debug the draw ray to see the ray in the scene view, right? But uh, the direction we give is actually only one meter. 
So the, the length of this ray is actually one meter, but for the other one, for when we test, when we do the physics.raycast, we never really define a length. We just give, okay, this is the origin and this is the direction. Now, if you do not define the, um, the actual max distance of the ray, it's going to go forever. It's an infinite ray. So let's just assume that we delete this momentarily and then we go in the game. We get a false. So we're not actually hitting anything. So that ray just starts from the player um, and it just goes on forever and it's not hitting anything because I don't have I don't have any colliders in the back over here so we do get a false and the reason we get a no reference is because we're using um, hit and hit has no information in it because we're not hitting anything so that would explain why we have um, we have through pretty much everywhere we go it's because we're surrounded with walls here's what we're gonna be doing we're gonna be assigning a max distance to that so let's have a look. We can use the sixth overload. This one takes an array and then it fills information of what we hit. And then finally, a float max distance. So let's go with one meter. I'm just going to remove that debug.log now that we know what the problem is. And if we just move around in the scene and we press on left click, we're always getting false now unless we actually get close to an object that has a collider like say this wall. In this case, it's still false because um, this is a mesh collider. It's not actually hitting anything. It's just below it. So that's kind of it's kind of annoying. Um, but let's go with this pillar of here. And this one says through because our ray does go through the actual collider. And this collider is also a mesh collider, which is hard to tell right now because of the colors. But um, it's a mesh collider. It's pretty much just fitting the shape, as you can tell. So we're getting a true there. We're also getting through if we go over bonfires like that, as you can tell. And uh, let's actually keep going and do what we're supposed to do in the first place. Let's actually pick up that bonfire. So since we know that this returns a uh, boolean, true or false, we're going to be using it in a, st in a if statement. So if we do hit something, then do the code over here and if it doesn't then we don't really care what happens next because we're not actually hitting something we're not really selecting anything so let's go ahead um, now since this is a if statement and we're using a raycast we know that if we're inside of that scope if we're in here we know that hit as a value because we've hit something and it returns the value um, of what we've hit let's go ahead and just note of that transform keep track of that transform so up here I'll be doing private transform picked up object or something of the sort now we're gonna say picked up object is equal to it dot transform so if we go next to an object we click on left mouse then uh, the raycast actually hits it we're gonna be assigning that object transform to picked up object and in our update, if we do have a picked up object, so if picked up object is um, is equal to something, so we can just leave it like that. If it's equal to something, it should move along with our player. So we're going to be doing, um, how exactly should we go about making this move with our player? We're going to be using a delta movement. So private vector3 last position this is only like some custom logic we're putting in right here so um, every frame we're gonna register where my player is right here so last position is equal to transform that position and we're also going to move the object using that same Delta so let's say picked up object dot transform that position is plus equal to last position minus transform dot position. Let's try something like that. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but at least we're gonna have a good time if it doesn't. So I'm going to go up to any object really. Let's say, let's take up this big pillar here. Then I press on left click, and it's moving with us. Okay, it's moving in the wrong. Um, we we just invert something, but actually it's moving with us anyway. 
So let's go back and let's just put the last position at the very end of this equation. And this way it should actually work as intended. Yeah, so this thing now follows us. That's pretty cool. And my camera is colliding with uh, the collider on that thing. That's not cool though. But as you can tell, we picked up this object and um, let's actually just put a release on that as well. So if we click on mouse button and we do have something, so if picked up object is equal to true, then I'll say picked up object is equal to null. This way we don't actually move things anymore if um, we click again. So let's pick this up, move it, click again. We're dropping it. As simple as that. That's pretty cool. Now if we'd like to actually increase the, um, the length of our array, all we really have to do is go up here in the physics at Raycast, so that thing. Let's say we go for 3 meter. Now what's going to happen is uh, you're not going to be able to see it in the game just yet. As you can tell, uh, we're going to pick up that wall over here. Now while the array does not hit that wall, we can still pick it up with us because our array, our Raycast is actually 3 meter versus the debug, the draw rate, the one we actually see, that's only one meter. But now, what if you actually like to see it? Now, you're going to see that if you're trying to change the length of that vector here, of that draw ray, uh, you don't get an overload that says max distance. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking the ray direction and actually mul multiplying that by um, the length. So ray the direction times the length you want. So three meter in this case to match the actual ray cast. Now this is going to give you a visual representation of your actual pickup range. Let's pick up this thing here. And then we can move it around. Good time. Let's pick up this. Oops. There we go. So we got something of the sort we can play with, which is pretty cool. And um, yeah, so let's move on to another function now so we can actually test out more things. We're going to go ahead and we're going to test out a overlap function. So I'm just going to get rid of all of that. And we're going to do the exact same uh, type of mechanic. So we're going to be grabbing objects and moving them along with us. But we're going to be doing it for a overlap sphere. So there's going to be multiple objects in there. All the collider we hit in that overlap sphere, we're going to drag them with us. And then we're going to see a little bit on layers as well to um, actually close this nicely and actually have some optimization tip on Raycast. Okay, so enough talking. Let's actually get right into it. Um, I'm going to start by writing down physics dot overlap sphere, and we're going to be looking at the parameter together. So as you can tell, we have the position and the radius, and then a layer mass if you wish. And what else? A query trigger iteration, which we're not going to go into right now. But uh, let's just start with the easiest part. Now, vector three position. That would be the position where the grenade explode um, in our example. But since we don't really have grenades here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the player transform that position again plus vector three dot up because we want to be in the center of that player, and then a radius, and that's where it gets a little bit cool. So uh, we get to define how big the sphere is. So let's just say it's going to be um, let's just say it's going to be two meters. So that means the diameter of the sphere, the whole length of the sphere is going to be 4 meters. Which in return, if you would just go in the scene a little bit and uh, we try to calculate that, 4 meters would be 4 of those squares you see on the floor here. So let's just assume that um, the center of my player right here would be the detonation point, then all those 4 square would be in range. So all the objects inside of those four squares by four square like that would be in range and it would be grab. Okay, let's keep going. Now what exactly does this return to us? The um, the raycast, we know this returns a boolean, so you true or false. But now in this case, it returns an array of collider, which is a little bit different, but we're gonna be working with it anyway. Let's go ahead and declare a collider array. And let's just say it's going to be like objects affected by, you know, let's just call it objects. 
so objects is going to equal physics dot overlap sphere now to know if we do hit something or not we're going to be doing an iteration let's do let's do it for each why not so for each collider c in objects so we're going to run through all of them one by one and now this is where you could do a c dot got component enemy script and uh, deal damage something like that you could be doing something really fancy uh, but I do not have those kind of script on my object right now so what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna be putting it in the list we're gonna be keeping all of the transform instead of a list I'll quickly just go fetch the list from um, system.collection.generics and inside of here I'll be declaring a private list of transform object to move and now every time I do a uh, click on my button which I have not really put right now but I'll do it object to move is equal to a new list and we're gonna do C we're gonna do object to move dot add so for every single collider we have in that array we're gonna add the transform of that collider to our list so C dot transform and let's only do that if we click on the button because if we do this in an update this is going to be really expensive so if input dot get mouse button down left click if we left click let's go ahead and run all of this nice code here okay so we're pretty much putting all the transform we hit with our overlap sphere inside of an um unless what could we do with that we could be moving it the same exact way that we just did with the raycast so I'll implement the same exact mechanic. So last position is equal to transform the position down here. And then um, we could do a for each again, but yeah, let's do it for each, why not? So for each transform T in object to move, which is our list, we're gonna be doing what we've did um, earlier. So T dot position is plus equal to player the position so wait actually no it's transform the position plus or is it minus last position I'm getting a little bit confused here okay so let's quickly read that code over again if we hit the left mouse button then we create an array of collider that's just for storing purpose and then we fill that array of collider with everything that is on top of our player and has a two, um, two meter radius so we're gonna put a sphere on top of our player and everything inside of that sphere is going to be returned in that collider array and then we create a new list of transform and for every single collider that we hit we take the, um, the transform of that collider and we put it inside of a list now for every object in that list we move it the same exact way we move um, all the objects in the last example Let's try this out. Hopefully this is not going to be too, too weird. Oh, actually, it's going to get pretty weird, but <laughs> um, let's check it out. What is our error down here? So we do get a null reference exception because our list is not really defined. So I'll go up here and I'll just declare that list. All right. So here we, here we are in our game, and um, as you can tell, we get some really weird bug. And um, it's not really that weird when you think about it, is we pretty much grab the floor. And by grabbing the floor and moving along with the floor, you get this kind of effect. But now if we go right about, say, here, and we just try to grab everything around us. Now this is going to be quite weird, but as you can tell, is we, we did a sphere around our player, and we just, well, we just did that. We, we grab a sphere and we just move all the object around us, just like this. Now if you go on your plane and you put ignore raycast, um, it's not going to work because we're not really ignoring the raycast right here. We're not, I mean, we're not actually using a raycast, so it's not going to work like that. What we're going to have to do instead is actually use... A layer mask and this is where uh, it's a really good practice to do because it's going to save you a lot of memory it's going to only do the ray cast and also the uh, sphere cast the overlap sphere all that kind of stuff it's only going to do it against one layer of collider 
So let's say that in our game, we only want to be able to pick up bonfires, which is a little bit weird. But uh, let's go ahead and just do that. We're going to be choosing all the bonfires by doing a search over here in my hierarchy. I'll be taking all of these and I'll be putting them on a new layer that I'll create. So I'll add a new layer. This is going to be the bonfires with a non-capital letter. Actually, let's, let's put a capital letter because the other one, they do have one. So user layer number eight, all of my bonfire are going to be on the bonfire layer. Now in our code, and we get this exactly for the raycast as well. It's the same thing for the raycast. It's always the last parameter here. It's the int layer mask. Now, um, if we go back in our game and we just take a look quickly, this should be under user layer number eight. So it would, this should be index number eight, but sometimes we get some weird bug where it doesn't work. Let's actually just try it out. Let's put eight here. This is not really good practice, but at least we're gonna see if it works or not. So I'm clicking here, I'm not getting anything. As you can tell, I'm clicking and I'm not moving anything. Now if I go close to this bonfire, it's also not working right now. So let's just scrap the idea of putting eight in here. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the layer mask uh, struck and we're gonna be doing name to layer, which is going to return you a int. But in exchange, you're gonna be giving it a name. So in our case, bonfire like that. Back in our game, we are going to test this out. And it still does not seem to work for some reason. Okay, so sometimes I do get that problem as well where the layer mask, uh, the way I use it, it doesn't really work. And um, what I do to fix it is a little bit weird is I just go up here and I do a public layer mask. I declare a public one that I just call mask and then I use that instead. And uh, it does that for some reason. For some, I don't know why it does it. I think it's a bug, but I'm not quite sure how exactly the layer, the name to layer works in the back end. But if it does not work, you've got multiple ways to fix it. As you can tell, I've declared a, um, a public mask. And as you can tell right here, this is it. So you get to choose which layer you want. In this case, bonfire. And if we just walk up to bonfire this time, technically, it should work and we just grab all the bonfires like that and we're having a good time and now that I think about it there has to be another way as well you can do a layer mask a uh, name to layer use the bonfire which is going to give you what I think it's going to give you it's actually going to give you that number eight so you're getting eight out of that and what you want to do here is shift that by one this way and this is going to give you the right number you want here I think I'm, I'm just venting that right here but I'm pretty sure it's going to work now and it does so yeah you could be doing that instead of having a public mask I'm glad I found another way to do it I was getting a little bit annoying but um, as you can tell we did grab all the bonfire around us and we can just go around and grab them all by left clicking and guys that is just one of the many things you can do with Raycast. There's such a lot of things you can do with Raycast and uh, you know that's the base of shooter games as well. That's the base of a lot of games. But there's just one warning that I'd like to give you guys before you go and uh, is that Raycast are expensive. They are really really expensive because you're really just casting a ray and you're testing out all the colliders in the scene. You're like, well not really all the colliders but all the colliders inside of that layer. You're testing a ray or a sphere or a box against all of those so this is something you do not want to do in an update. Well, right now I'm doing it in an update, but at least I'm wrapping it around a mouse button. So if I don't click on my mouse button, we're not doing those calculations. So this is a good way to do it. But if you're just putting it in an update and you're like you're checking every frame, say if you're grounded or something like that, make sure that your ray is really small. Make sure that um, you really have a minimum amount of that. You don't want to have like a, you know, like, five or six raycasts going on on every single frame because especially for a mobile game this would lag quite a lot um, for a PC game of course you can have more but still just remember that this is a really expensive operation and in the end it can make your game lag and um, that's that's where I'm going to end it today guys so as always thanks a lot for watching I really appreciate the support you've been giving me and if you wish to support me a little bit more you can hit that like button you can check out the patreon page if you wish to pledge 
and also some rewards are going to be coming for those guys on Patreon. And also if you have any comment or question, you can leave them in the comment section below. I do read everything, I don't answer to everything because I'm getting spam quite a lot nowadays. But um, yeah, I do read everything, so please leave a comment if you have an opinion to give or a question. And you might find some help, who knows? Other than that guys, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next one.